In this video, we're going to look at a real-world problem that um, we can apply what we've learned about proportions to. So it says a cyclist rides 14 miles in one and a half hours. If she continues at the same rate, how long will it take her to ride 35 miles? Okay, and so of course the key here is that she continues to ride at the same rate. Okay, so um, we look at this information and we understand that 14 miles goes with one and a half hours, and I'm going to write one and a half as 1.5. Okay, so these two go together. Okay, uh, and then on the other hand, what it's asking us, like under, let's understand first what it's asking us. If she continues at the same rate, how long will it take? Right? How long will it take her to ride 35 miles? So what we have here is kind of another set of information that if she goes 35 miles, well, we don't know how long it takes her. That's what we want to know. So that's our variable, right? right? So we have 14 going with 1.5, and then we have 35 going with x. Now, since she's going at the same rate, comparing 14 to 1.5, right? Comparing these two quantities should be the exact same as comparing 35 miles to how long it would take to go 35 miles. So whenever we're talking about comparing two things, we're talking about setting up a ratio. So the ratio of miles to the amount of time it takes should be equal regardless of how many miles it is since she's going at the same rate the entire time. So we get this proportion of 14 over 1.5 equals 35 over x. And here we just have the familiar setup of a proportion to solve. All right. So we'll go ahead and take our cross product first of all. So 14 times x, 1.5 times 35. Putting the 14 in front as our convention, and then 1.5 times 35. Now 1.5 times 35, I think it might be a good idea to write that out in some long multiplication. But again, remember, our scratch work goes separate from our algebraic work. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 3 plus 2 is 17. Bring a zero down, one times five is five, one times three is three. Add those up, we get a five here, 12 and five. And of course, we have one decimal place, so 14x equals 52.5. And then we know the last algebraic step here, since I'm multiplying x by a whole number, what I'm just gonna do is simply divide both sides by 14. So divide by 14, divide by 14. And again, I'll have scratch work to do here. But we'll do that away from the main body of our work. So x equals, so 52.5 divided by 14. So 14 goes into 52. Um, let's see. First of all, 14 is not a, a, one of our special uh, product values that we would memorize, right? But what we can do is think about 7, right? So 7 would only go into 52 7 times, right? And 7 is exactly half of 14. And so 14 would go in about half of seven times, uh, but of course, half of seven isn't a whole number. So I think, uh, you know, half of seven is three and a half. Uh, so let's guess three for how many times 14 goes into 52. So th three times four is 12. Three times one plus one is four. So we have a remainder of 10. Drop down our five. And of course, remember to send that decimal point straight up. 14 goes into 105. Well, let's see. 15 uh, goes into 105 
seven times, so I think that's a decent guess for 14. Seven times four is 28. Seven times one plus two is nine. So we do a little bit of borrowing here. So 15 minus eight is seven. Add another zero, drop that zero down. 14 goes into 70, that's gonna happen exactly five times. Five times one plus two is 70. So what we end up with is x is equal to 3.75 hours. Okay. Now I showed this whole problem using um, decimals. You could have also used one and a half up here instead of 1.5, and in that case, you would have gotten three and three quarters hours, and that of course is acceptable as well. Um, but the one thing to make sure of when you finish a problem that's a real world type problem, an application problem, make sure there is a label after the answer. Don't just write 3.75, write 3.75 hours.